Well, uh, I'm very excited to be here. I mean, very excited to be able to um, lead the, the uh, Greater Houston Partnership going next year. Before I jump into my comments, though, I do want to acknowledge my most ardent and longtime supporter for more than 35 years, Annette Mullins, my wife. Thank you for that applause. <laughs> I also have uh, several colleagues here from Lime Rock Resources uh, here in support, so very much appreciate it. So let me start. My view is that our job at the partnership is to create opportunities for companies and businesses and their employees and their families, and to extend those opportunities as far across our community as we can. Steve and I both are going to be talking about that briefly today. I believe Houston is truly an opportunity city, and I think it started all the way back in the early 1800s when Houston was founded. I think there's tremendous opportunity here. Today, companies and families, people from all over are moving to our city seeking that opportunity. So I'm not going to spend too much time on my background, but my personal story is one where I've been very fortunate to have had opportunities that I could chase after. It started basically when I grew up, I grew up here in Houston. Uh, but my opportunity story really started with getting a great education. I went to Strake Jesuit High School here in Houston, played three sports there. Then uh, I got a scholarship offer to go to Stanford University and play football. I graduated with a degree in human biology and lettered in four, lettered four years in football and four years in track. For those of you who know my work at Lime Rock Resources here in the energy private equity space, you might be surprised to know that I actually, when I was in college, was on the pre-med track and I got accepted to the Baylor College of Medicine right here in town. But in my last quarter, as a senior, in 1984, I got drafted in the sixth round by the Houston Oilers, went to the team, I made the team, I actually started as a rookie that whole year. It was a fabulous year. Really enjoyed it because I was coming back home. Unfortunately, in my second year, I had a serious injury, and I got, I was out of the, um, out, out, not able to play for a long time and ended up getting cut. Now I did keep my options open for my medical pursuits and actually matriculated. At the time it was the University of Texas Medical School, now it's the McGovern Medical School, but I went to medical school for that first year. At the end of that year I started having second thoughts about going and pursuing a medical career and after some very serious soul searching I decided to shift gears and pursue a career in finance. So I applied to a number of different MBA programs. I got accepted to the Wharton School in Philadelphia, and I went there to get my MBA. When I left Wharton, I got a job offer at Goldman Sachs in New York City. So I moved to New York City and started my investment banking career as an associate in the oil and gas group. After five years, I had the opportunity to move back to Houston. And I was really trying to be closer to my energy clients, and I worked out of the Houston Goldman Sachs office. After a total of 15 years at Goldman, I had the opportunity to leave to launch a startup oil and gas private equity firm called Lime Rock Resources. Today, that was 19 years ago. The firm is doing well. We have uh, just over $3 billion under management. Like I said, my story is one of having opportunities and trying to make the most of those opportunities where possible. But for many Houstonians, this is not the case. The road to opportunity is long, or it may not even be in view. One great thing about being chair is you get to pick a theme to rally the partnership around for the next 12 weeks, 12 months. Well, you probably already figured it out. My theme is opportunity for Houston. Now, I know that just saying opportunity, it's a very broad topic, probably means something a little bit different to everybody. But let me, let me 
focus in on that just a little bit. My vision of opportunity for Houston has three sub-focus areas. The first one is public education. The second one is workforce development, making sure people have the skills that they need to be successful in a career. And the third one might surprise you, but it's mental health. So let me just touch briefly on each one of those three, and I'll be done. When I think about the first focus area in terms of public education, I reflect on the fact that having a very strong K through 12 public education system is really a critical foundation for people being able to take advantage of opportunities. It certainly was the case for me, probably a lot of you as well. This is why the work to build a better HISD is essential and why the district definitely needs our support. I'll share statistics with you. Right now, today, over 40% of the students in HISD attend a school that has a ranking of either D or F in terms of student achievement. That's just unacceptable in Houston. Unfortunately, this school underperformance has a disproportionate effect on minority students. Black students in HISD are two times as likely as other student groups to attend a campus that receive the equivalent of a D or an F from the state. HISD and really all of our local districts must be focused on creating better student outcomes for all students to prepare them for either college or a career or both. Let me go to my second point. When I mention workforce development, I am speaking about training specific skills so that people can go to specific jobs and have a successful career. In particular, the people that are coming out of our public education system. Now, Steve is going to spend more time talking about this, so I'm not going to spend much more time on this at all. I will mention that the, at the GHP, the Upskill Houston Initiative will celebrate, and that initiative focuses on workforce development. They are going to be celebrating their 10th anniversary at the GHP later this year. So let me move to the third topic, mental health. I think companies and managers have for a long time really understood the importance of supporting employees with excellent health care benefits. And while I think the business community started to view mental health as a business issue prior to, the, to COVID, certainly coming out of COVID, I think we realized while wow, supporting the mental health of our employees and the families a really important and critical role for our companies to play. Another statistic. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, it's estimated that more than one in five adults in the U.S. suffer from some form of mental illness. The pandemic resulted in a 25% increase in the prevalence of anxiety and depression. These aren't just statistics, these are our employees. So that is why last year at the GHP, our Healthcare Policy Advisory Committee started doing work on a deep dive to understand the mental health, the state of mental health in Houston. And they were focused on two things. Number one, what's the impact on the business community? And number two, what are the approaches that companies are taking to support the mental health of their employees? So I look forward to that work ahead. I think it's essential to the city's long-term success to allow all Houstonians to pursue the opportunities that are put before them. So I'm going to close where I started. Houston is truly a city of opportunity. And for many of us, for me, probably for many of you in this room, that opportunity, we feel like it's in, within reach. But we know that for so many in Houston, we've got work to do to expand and widen the access to that opportunity we have in our city. I think it comes through ensuring strong education, training for the skills needed to be successful in a career, and ensuring the well-rounded support services, including mental health. So I look forward to the year ahead. I look, working, I look forward to working with all of you in this room as we focus on creating opportunities in Houston. Now, to continue this discussion 
It's my pleasure to introduce our president and CEO, Steve Kane. 